Welcome everyone to sing with me number 135, right? Um, and I'm going to mute you all because we will start singing in a minute. And if you would like to say something, make an observation or even sing a solo to us, please switch yourself on and wave and, uh, and say something. Now chat should be open. I haven't checked it. Is it working? Is chat working? If you want to use it and say hello to each other, please feel free to do that. We are going straight into our Yiddish song. And the Yiddish song is a lovely, beautiful melody. Uh, we won't have a warm up today. Uh, the melody is gentle, soft. Uh, so hopefully that'll, that'll warm us up quietly and softly as well. So uh, I know the song from the Ruth Rubin archive. In fact, it's one of these rare occasions where I heard it sung before I saw sheet music. And then I found sheet music in the Mlotek books. It's slightly, it's slightly different. It's a slight variation to what Ruth Rubin sings. Ruth Rubin is a wonderful collector, was a wonderful collector of Yiddish folklore in the 20th century. There's a huge archive of her. If anyone doesn't know about it, check it out. Now, here is the tune. I'm going to share it. Oh, before we do that, let me just ask you how many of you have come across that song? In, no? Okay, yeah. Jill, yeah, maybe, maybe not, yeah? Okay, well, yeah. Hi, Leslie, hello. Right, so we're going straight into the song. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, Leslie. For some reason, you are, uh, yeah, you become big on the screen. And now, here is the song. Here comes the song. It's a love song and also not just a love song, a sad love song. Before we read through text, I'm going to play the tune to you. Here is how the tune goes. La 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 You see repetitions, you see a phrase going up, repeated but slightly higher, all the normal folk elements in that tune. And I'm going to uh, share the text bit with you. Now share screen. And we're going to read through the song now together. Now, the story unfolds. The usual connection between a bird and the message in Yiddish folklore and other folklores is in this song. We have a bird bringing some news. The news is not very good. So I sit on my ganical on my balcony, the uh, shtetl to look around, the to look over a shtetl, a little town. Kumtsevli in a clean feigala comes, flying a little uh, bird. Und tut sich um, und zu mir buchen and uh, What's a bukan, by the way? And gives me a what? A bukan. What does it say here? A bird. It doesn't really translate. That's interesting. Okay, um, comes a little bird, and uh, the bird brings a letter, a little little letter. Uh, I don't mind how you fly beautifully, you little bird, but here is the bird drops a letter, and I bend down to grab the letter, to take the, the letter. Uh, I read the first line and it says that my beloved is, uh, has been poisoned. And I read the second line and der Gelipter is gestorben, my beloved is dead. Right? All these sad uh, Yiddish folk songs. And now we have a conclusion. Come here, come together all my uh, friends, it's female friends, Havertes. Uh, come together, and those of you who have uh, who have been in love, let's help me uh, to cry. So they're crying together, and kind of what I find is interesting is that she assumes the singer that everyone who has been in love will be into crying. So it's kind of you know love is sad, um, don't you find? Those of you who can read this text, it kind of is sad. 
Right, what's happening here in chat? Nice to be here. Hello, everyone. Buchen could be a verb, German buchen, to, to bend down. Okay, so, uh, so the bird kind of bends down, bows down. Okay, right, okay. So, how about the tune? Let's look at it. First of all, I will sing the tune slowly. Uh, please follow the tune with me. I am singing it exactly in this key. It's quite low. It doesn't have to be high and super expressive in the high range. It can be gentle and low. Plus, we are not warmed up. So let's go together. La, 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 la. Second half. lovely tune one more time together and we will just then sing through the whole song that's your note let's go together and la, 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 la. isn't it what do you think yeah nice and folky now when we look at text there is one little remark I'd like to make before we read through it now you will see that uh, I have put in all the three verses into this that's this is the second page of what I sent you what I put on my website just now before going online I thought it would be easier to read the three lines here rather than learning the tune by heart and then looking just at the second page. Here is your second page with Yiddish. If you would like to look at that, please print it. Also, what I've done, I've indicated here, sorry, in this first column, not in the Yiddish column, the repeats of text. And this is not just an accident, uh, not just Ruth Rubin sings it, but I've listened to several different singers singing this song. What happens is the first line and the second line I repeated then the third and the fourth lines are repeated. So we have a stretched kind of intro into the song, into the story. And then it like all the bird lines are repeated and repeated, but the last lines are not repeated. It all goes all the way to the end. Uh, so we are going to notice that when we sing it, okay? Just something to bear in mind. I've put it all into this. Sorry about the flipping down and, you know, back and forth up and down i couldn't uh, fit it onto onto my screen otherwise i wouldn't be able to see it ready to go ready to sing it let's go now because uh text is folky we have a different number of of um syllables per note so sometimes it'll be a little bit different so rhythm will change let's go Yes. 
Just check the last bit. Zol mir helfen weinen, not zol mir zol mir helfen mir weinen. Zol mir helfen weinen. That's a typo. And there was one more thing. Sorry, I've just noticed it. Der gelipter here. It should be just gelipter. Uh, how does that go? So basically, a couple of syllables are not quite in place because of all that stretching and fitting the text into the music. Polina, should there be you? should there be two niche? Or it is should the, be too niche. Like, nicht, nicht. Yeah, it should be niche. What does it say, nit? It says niche twice at the end of the one line and at the beginning of the sec of the second yeah, line. Yeah, it should be one niche. That's the one. Okay. Yeah, that's Thank it. You. That's it. Yeah. So um, if you look at just text on the second page or at your printout, it won't go wrong. Hopefully, in the Melodic book, it's okay. When I type it in last moment, I usually make mistakes. You know me well enough. <laughs> okay. Now I think. Let me just check what happens there. Yeah. So what do you think of the song? Nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, that, <laughs> that, that. It's very, very folky. It's very folky. The repetition. The, yeah, who is speaking? Please turn on. Oh, speak. Really sad. Yeah. Tanya? Yeah? yeah, it's so sad. Of course it's very sad. Not only like they separate, but oh, he's dead. <laughs> Yeah, that's Yiddish songs for you. Uh, okay. I mean, um, for Russian songs, I say if only one person dies, it's a happy song. In Yiddish songs, <laughs> there's always separation. A lot of the songs are about separation and uh, yeah. marrying someone you don't want to be with and all that. But um, Gestorben, he's dead, is not that often. Doesn't happen that often, right? Okay. There. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There. Well, at least the bird doesn't die. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here is what we're going to do. We're going to sing it one more time together. Hopefully, I'll cope with it a little bit better with the syllables in place. Uh, do it with me, and then we will jump into a Tata song together. I see that uh, my Tata friend is here, Gule, and she is a professional musician, and she speaks, I hope she speaks uh, Tata, I think. So she might be good help to us. But now, Yiddish song one more time. I'm going to share my screen with you. Now, uh, do you think, wait a second. Do you think just looking at text would be more uh, better now? Do you think you know your music okay by now? What do you think? Look at text. Look at text because some of you read Yiddish as well. Let's try and look at text this time. Okay, let's look at text without my stupid typos oh erica from hawaii is joining us how lovely okay here we go i'll make it a little bit bigger here we go <laughs> Ich geh 
Weiß euch nun gar nicht gut, dass Städte leben kochen. Wir gehen an Reis, euch nun gar nicht gut, dass Städte leben kochen. Kommt zu fliehen, a kleine Fege, und tut sich zu mir Es war der Mirakle in Brüssel, du ich war dem Knien. Ich lehne über das erste Schurle, der Geliebter ist verdorben. Ich lehne über das zweite Schurle, anyone crying here all right it's nice to know that nobody has heard the song before right nobody is that right let me look at the second page we have two yeah no lovely song taken to your repertoire huh um i don't know if you want to sing uh, sad songs i had a little discussion about we we did uh, in the yiddish choir and in um, Weimar just now, we talked about sad songs and about how many positive songs we want to sing and positive songs ver versus um, sad songs and how we want to see this culture. I think when we sing personal things like this, songs about love, it's okay because these things still happen and uh, it's representative of most people how they felt and how love unfolded for most people some time ago and somebody noted that most love songs are about suffering and about pain because that's when people need um, some outlet for their feelings when it's happy it's all fine so we don't really sing songs about it what do you think it's a funny observation maybe right okay what's happening here typo uh, single yiddish love song with a ha i know only one yeah olaf which one is this one one song with a happy ending which one is that olaf what happened? I don't know it. What happens there at the end? Hossen and Kalle, they give each other commands to do things that are impossible. <laughs> okay. And at the end, she says to him, We will be a couple. Yeah, nice. Yes. But do they actually become a couple? <laughs> <laughs> right, you see? I'm very ambiguous. Um, it's very interesting. We, the, hmm? we sang it in a workshop in Weimar, I think it was 2009, when Sasha was the first time the, the uh, lecturer there. Mm -hmm. And we had a duo. And uh, my part, the male part, uh, was accompanied in C major uh, as a... Uh, sorry, what's the... Third? the yeah. And, and and the female part was was in B as a waltz. All right, so it's both kind of happy. What what what, what what's the, the rhythm? Bum 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 bum. Hora, hora, hora. Exactly. Yes. I just forgot. Exactly. 
yeah. nach Rossenort gewollt, sein Kalle euch klären, wie klug sie ist gewähnt. Er hat ihr geheißen, alle Eterl stellen, von der Erde bis in den Himmel aran. Beautiful, beautiful. I don't know this song, but it's good to know that there's something happy. There are a few more. We, we've collected a few more songs, but... Oh, Sueri is coming back in. Okay. We've collected a few more, and I think that Saposhkalach, um, uh, I will sell my boots just to be with you, is not necessarily... A, it's a famous Yiddish song. Is not necessarily a negative song either, because they may be together in the end, but it's not quite clear, you see? Nothing is clear. Now, uh, let me just see your faces. Uh, we might want to go over the two songs at the end of our session. I would like to teach you the Tata song now. I must tell you that I'm quite challenged by it. I never teach Tata songs because it's not something I know really well. And here is Julia, Julia Hamzina coming in and she is the Tata friend of mine who somehow dropped out and now she's back in. Gulia, are you here with us? She's from Kazan, same town as I am, where I studied and she studied. And... Uh, She's Tata. Gule, I don't know if you can hear us. I don't see you, you hear you. But here is my little disclaimer, and it's official for YouTube and for all of you. I don't speak Tata, but I lived in Tatarstan, and obviously I heard these songs online all the time, or not online, on the radio, on television. And very often I thought it was boring and it was not very interesting. And only now I, I began to appreciate how interesting and how deep and how different that culture was, especially when I look at um, ornamentation and phrasing in Yiddish folklore. And I see that the same things happen in another folk culture, in Tata culture. It comes from a completely different part of the world. Not quite completely different. There is a, the jury is out where some of it came from uh, Tatars. There's an argument where they came from. They've been in Tatarstan in central Russia for a thousand years. A thousand years celebration was um, in Kazan in the capital of Tatarstan uh, when I lived there or when I just left for Britain. So we're like a thousand something years um, there. And um, it's believed that Tatars came from um, around Bulgaria and Turkey and Mongolia, it's a combination of folks, a combination of musics as well. I won't tell you much more about this music. I will show you the song and then we will listen to the file that maybe just listen to the first couple of lines uh, so we can all hear the ornaments and the, the difference. Here is the song. And let's try, first of all, read through this. Uh, I Try to squeeze the Latin into here. Now there's something happening in the chat. Let me see. The chat, the song on your website sounded a bit like Chinese music. That, yeah, Deborah, uh, somebody else commented on that. Chinese because of pentatonics. So here is the tune. <laughs> And it repeats what do you think why does it sound chinese to us i already said why because it's in pentatonics the notes of that mode <laughs> basically if you play on the black on the black notes here on the piano um i'll do it here <laughs> So the whole tune fits onto these black notes. That's your pentatonics, five notes. So that's why we make a connection with the, the closest association we have, Chinese music. A lot of world music is in pentatonics. Surprisingly, African um, blues music is also in pentatonics but, uh, sometimes, but in a different kind of pentatonics, five notes, pentatonics. Right, how do you, what do you think? Sing through the tune? Yeah? Yeah, come on, let's do it. Sing through the tune. Now, you will notice that I sometimes step out a little bit. I, I make a tiny little variation. It's kind of the step in the right direction. Like in uh, Yiddish music, you have versions, you have variations, you have a skeleton of the tune, and you have all the little ornaments around these notes. And as long as they stay within the mode, it's 
it's the in the right kind of a stylistic uh, frame just the tune once through the tune slowly okay that's our first note Ta -da -da. Da, 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 ending here, accompanied usually by one, four, one, tonic, subdominant, dominant, for those of you with technical minds here. Okay, there's something in chat here. Uh, let's see where you can get Paul McCartney used the pentatonic scale, and like that. I don't know, I don't know. It's Irish. Yeah, Irish music. Yeah, it exists in other... There are elements of pentatonics, but you see what happens here, and what happened generally with Tata music, that originally, like in many other cultures, it was linear. So, ta it doesn't quite match with it with major minor with his with this accompaniment the usual functional vertical accompaniment that came from the west but in tatarstan like in many many other cultures from the end of the 18th which century 1800 1800 something 19th century we have a great combination of tata linear tata thinking and accompaniment um, like this Western accompaniment so that all the way through the 20th century we have Tata composers who put these things together still using pentatonics in the melody so it's still more Tata sounding and using um, Western chords to accompany we have Tata operas we have Tata symphonies it goes all the way through the 20th century as a line a general line through Tata music very very interesting music there is um, Paul's link I'm sure that of pentatonic scale I'm sure that you can find um, um, lots of information on Tata music online, maybe not so much to listen to. Now, before we sing the song and try um, our best to sing in Tata, which will sound Turkic to you, I'd like to play you how this song goes, sung by a, a proper Tata folk singer. Here we go. Sorry. There will be an introduction, which is also a version of the melody. It's a version of the melody. Listen to how ornamented, how much around the melody will be in the accordion uh, introduction. Accordion is very, very traditional for Tata music now. Okay, so that's as much as we are going to sing together. What do you think? 
<laughs> what do you think? Absolutely fantastic, Paulina. I really love it. Really? really? Yeah. What, what, what do you like about it? I don't know. I mean, I find it exciting. I find it enticing. Um, I cannot believe I'll be able to sing it, but I really love it. Thanks, Ben. I can't believe I will be able to sing it, but we have Julia here. Julia, Julia, <laughs> please comment if you have any comments. You are the pro for Tata music here. So if you want to say anything, please do. I'll try to help phonetically if if you need. Oh, please, yes, please. I, I, I'm not sure I'll be able to uh, read. Maybe you can read it to us. But uh, before we do that, Julia, thank you. Um, Julia, sorry, Gulia. Gulia is a Tata name. Gulia. Are you Gulnara, by the way? Yes, this is Tata name, Gulnara, Gulnara, yeah. Yeah, common Tata name. So um, this music is different, and I think what we don't know, I mean, maybe I know a little bit more, it's in my ear, I don't know that much, but what's in my ear is a very interesting combination of of the mode and the accompaniment, which to me makes it distinct, distinctly Tata. And there are a couple of other um, ethnic uh, groups within the Volga region, say Boshkortostani, Bashkortostanis are very close to Tatars in their language, in their culture, in their music. And even this song um, is believed to be Bash a Bashkortostani song as well. But they all sound Turkic, and um, the, especially these two languages. And the combination of the melody and the accordion, ornamented accordion, to me is profoundly from that region. It's, it, then it doesn't sound ta um, Chinese to me at all. Do you agree? But it, that takes the Chinese sound completely out, like completely out. So even though it's pentatonics, it, to me, it's really distinctly stylistically vol central Volga region. Yeah, I would just say, Paulina, that the the actual the, the voice production does sound a bit Chinese because they're, they're using the voice in a certain way, which That's is true. like. That's true. Again, uh, Chinese is the closest association to me when I heard Chinese people first, I mean, uh, second, I thought, oh, they sound a little bit Mongolian because I heard Mongolian music before then. And when I heard Mongolians, I thought, wow, that's a little bit like Kazakhi music. And then Kazakhis, to me, sounded a little bit like Tatars because Tatars were first in my life. A little bit nasal, right, Gule? Yeah. A little bit nasal, yeah. a little bit more here and a little bit of a squeeze here in the throat, right? <laughs> just it, it, never thought never thought about it yeah might be yes yes when you hear proper folk uh folk performers they have a little bit of the, uh, yes 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 nasal and yes. nasal on here right mm -hmm. okay um paulina i was going to say it reminded me of sort of a nasal vibrato combination and a lot of chinese music does sound like that to my untutored ear remember those of us in england we're a great big country so the distance between um tata uh, mongolia and china is uh, just around the corner from each other yeah okay. <laughs> so they're, they're all they're all the same i can see robin's laughing she knows a lot more about music than i do but uh, no there is that connection to my untutored ear and i'd like to learn and sing some more so maybe you could you could set up the London um, Tata Choir. That'll be for Gulia. Gulia, oh, that's, that's we something. <laughs> we could all join. <laughs> yeah, there is actually a Tata community in London. Let's let's yeah let's let's get back to our song. In terms of voice produ vocal production, I think that you move through the world, and the closer you get to a certain area, the more kind of vo vocal production gets kind of. They kind of overlap. It's not like in this region they sing exactly like that, and in that region, like you cross the border, and it's a different kind of voice production, vocal production. We have all these overlaps, and we have certain developments of how voices would be projected across many different cultures. So, of course, for us, maybe in the West, Japanese and Mongolian music will sound the same. For Mongolians, Chinese, Mongolian, and Japanese, and Korean music will be completely different. Or like all East European kinds of music, all the, or I don't know, basically, kind of how far, how far do you go? How far do you look from? So when you start zooming into these cultures, you will find differences. This this morning, I was reading through my notes from my uh, college about um, ritual songs, folk songs, kalyatki. Uh, they are Christmas short little Christmas songs sung by Ukrainians and Russians at the same shedrik, 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 vachka, we, we sing that, it's a known song. But apparently they have the same tradition, but in Ukraine, 
these songs were sung by age-specific groups. So Shedrovki would be sung by 10 to 12 year olds, in Russia it would be sung by anyone. And that's a tiny little difference. And a lot of things may be the same. So that's, that's going into, zooming into cultures. Enough speaking, enough speaking. Um, Nikosa, a song in Nikosa, I don't know. Told a song in Nikosa, I don't know that, even what that culture is. Okay, let's look at the tune and maybe, uh, Gulia, maybe you could read it to us. Could you do that? I'll try, but it will be my kind of sight reading because I, I never, never knew the lyrics before. I've heard something similar. But yeah. Yeah. Sandu Rashla Kunab Hoida. Wow. Sandu Rashla Kunab Hoida. Sayori. Sayori. Sarman Buila Runda. Tirek Te Shul. Sorman Buila Runda Tirek Te. And there is one more line there. Yeah. Stinga Bulhan Yeshlik Mehabetem Urlep Sheshek Ota Yurek Te. Right, so we notice that there is a, there are different vowels, te, yeah, yerek te, there is a she, she, there is koi, this ke that's wrapped in, in, in deeper in the throat, koi, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Right, koi, um, yeah. we will try our best, Gyula, we are, we're going to just... No, 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 it's, it's, it's absolutely yeah. not, you, you shouldn't do exactly. Yeah, it's basically what I'm saying is I'm, I'm just attempting to sing it like a Tata would, and um, I'm just going to try and read through it all the way through the page. Everyone else, follow me as much as you can. <laughs> uh, Gulli, we, are, we are hearing you. And, and Sueli, you're also not muted. Please, let me just mute everyone. It could be nice, but I am accompanying, so... <laughs> Sorry. Participants, let me just make sure everyone is muted. Yeah. Gula, do you know the song? Maybe you could sing it to us, no? Can't hear you. No, I've muted. I, will, I will try to decide singing. Okay, let's go. Okay. Let's hear Gulia first. And then we will sing it with piano, yeah? Let's go. Listen, follow, please. Sandu Hashlar Kuna Kuna Koida Sairai Yes, yes, I moved from pentatonic. Sarman. Yes, it would be nice with piano. I know, I can't accompany you. <laughs> Great. Okay, now everyone do what just Gulli did. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're going for it.
need the last three lines. That was our draft, uh, singing through together. How do you feel? We will sing it a few times so you get used to it. How was it? <laughs> yeah? Fun? Interesting, right? The main thing I find is to sit on that pentatonic. Yeah, sit on that pentatonic. <laughs> Up and down. And then you're kind of on the right track. Plus what happens when folk singers sing it, um, the variations. So it's kind of the main general, the general... Uh, Right, somebody's unmuted themselves. Uh, let's do that. Somebody, um, oh wait, sorry. Uh, these variations happen, uh, when you hear different singers, they interpret the melody in different ways. So what's written on the page, like in Yiddish folk songs, is not necessarily exactly the tune how we would follow it. Now I see a couple of people are unmuted. Do you want to say something? Do it now before we do it one more time. No, okay, I'm muting everyone and we're going to sing it. Maybe two, maybe three times, yeah? So you get used to it, right? Let's go. I'm sharing my screen with you. Here is our Tata song. Oh, by the way, I never told you what it means, eh? Oh, it's actually um, a sad Tata song about love and separation. <laughs> All the love songs seem to be sad, as I noticed, you know, uh, because people tend to sing when their heart is aching. Uh, it talks about Sarmanova, and I, I showed you on the map, on my website, um, where Sarmanova is, and it's really near the town where I, where I spent my childhood, Nebrzhne which is towards the east from Kazan, which is the capital of Tatarstan. And Sarmanova, I think it's something like 5,000 people, maybe 7,000, a small place. And this song, um, I think it has an author, but I could not find who the author was. But what I saw was that the song has become folklore. So it may have, had, may have had an author from Sarmanova, from that place. It's called Sarman in Tata, and it's called Sarmanovo, the Russian way, in Russian. So this person is uh, is leaving Sarmanova, and they are leaving. The, they're looking at the at the banks of the river, and they will wave with their handkerchief to their beloved, and the beloved one, will you remember me? Will you remember my songs and the songs I sang? Uh, and uh, it's enough uh, for one for for hay um, to grow in one season, but um, to stay there for one season. But it's uh, it's not enough for a for for human love. Um, uh, meeting up is oh, it says dating dear is a lot of fun, but breaking up is very sad. Now Gulia, after we've sung it, if you want to comment on this text, uh, let's do it. But now let's just get into singing it a couple more times, okay? I'm hearing you again. <laughs> okay, one more time. Pretend that we are 
singing the rest of the song, but sing from the beginning. different and interesting right surprisingly doable right how what helped you to do it I think because there were so few options for the notes <laughs> right pentatonics yeah. right yeah. you sit on the pentatonics yeah. and yeah kind of works right it does. right okay uh okay must and uh, link for that there's stuff happening in the chat let me just see mostly and people appreciate sad songs yeah there is a whole article and we keep coming back to this why we like songs in minor in the minor key or why we like sad songs more than happy songs there is a whole um, theory about it and not just one theory um because this is a practical session and we've talked quite a lot already i don't really want to get into it but there is something to be said about sad songs now Gula, do you have any comments on the meaning of the song maybe i didn't quite translate it 100 percent. if you want to say anything add anything you'll have to switch your cell phone where are you yeah, yeah. The, the the only thing i can say if you continue to sing and learn this song i will ask all details of my dad Oh. I'll, I'll speak to him. He will he will definitely tell us lots of information about geographical place, about background of the song, just a few things. I can't tell. Okay. But it's, it, it, it's a known song as far as I understand. We, which song? It's known. It's quite well known. No? Yes, yes, yes. Very famous amongst yeah people who live there. I, I, I just did side singing. It's been turning in my ears, but I feel see this song and first time trying to sing it's very beautiful well done for your pronunciation Paulina. it's fantastic <laughs> yeah absolutely it's like it's definitely from tatarstan but some uh, vowels like a mm -hmm. a they pronounce like o sha sha ota 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 sha sha with flowers are coming in blossom ota in, in sha -sha i know i even know some of the songs what's mehabetam yeah. is it something about love yeah, Sheshak, it means flowers are um, blossoming in my heart. Yurakta. And what's Mechabet? Mechabet is a happiness. Because oh, I, I also hear that word a lot. Yeah. And I, I hope, thank you, Lea. Uh, ju, sorry, Gule. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that a few of you recognize the, the Turkic sound of this language, right? Uh, and um, in when I was in Kazakhstan, I understood, I picked up quite a lot of words because of Tata. So apparently, Turks and Kazakhs and Tatars all understand each other, right, Gule? Lots of common words, yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the roots are common. Now, we only have something like seven minutes left, so I suggest that we sing the both songs now, the Yiddish song and the, the Tatar song, one after another, two completely different cultures, two completely different expressions of sad love. Let's go. And I suggest we start with the Yiddish song here, Oh, who remembers how it goes? Let's go. Ich geh a Reus, Eufen, Gadikol, Dos Städtele, 
completely different cultures both ornamented that says something about folklore right both with variations in both uh, no line is repeated the same way and when you hear folk singers from one culture or the other they never repeat the same line they always follow text and they always decorate a little bit right now there's stuff happening in the chat uh, da, 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 da. okay so um here is what I think. We had quite a big group here today. Would you like to meet again? I'm expecting you to say yes. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Look, yes. I, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Um, so I'm thinking um, maybe maybe something like once a month, every three weeks, something like this. And I'm, I've looked at my diary and because I bought Zoom for at least one month, I'll still have Zoom on the 19th of 
September, which is a Monday as well. And so I'm thinking about the 19th of September for a session of a Yiddish song and maybe a Russian song. Somebody specifically requested going back to Russian songs. Maybe I'll bring you a Russian song that time, but certainly a Yiddish song as well. Good? Yes, I've missed Russian songs. Yes, I, I've heard from a few of you and I started teaching other things because it's interesting and it's fun. But I kind of run out of cultures I'm in touch with. So <laughs> Russian tat. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much for joining me today and um, thank you. Hope to see you in real life or virtually again. And another couple of announcements uh, in Brighton Hove, there is a Yiddish choral workshop on the 12th of September. If you are here at the Progressive Synagogue in Hove, quite central, come to that. If you are an online Yiddish singer who comes to my Yiddish um, singing online uh, when they can, uh, when you can, uh, there will be a course for the Workers Circle based in New York uh, from mid-October to the end of November, five sessions. Uh, it's something that I do several times a year and this time they've booked me to do it again. So online people, you can come to that as well uh, or come to that if you can't come to the Brighton Choir. Good. Um, keep singing and um, keep well. I guess that's the end of our session. Thank you very much. And see you again. Yay. 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 Thank you. Bye. And bye. bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 bye.